Hello, it's Bronwyn White here from MyTravelResearch.com and thanks for being with us today. We are really excited about this webinar and I guess we're launching this system that we've been working on for the last two years and there is a story that sits behind this and we're going to go through this. So we thought it was about time to let everybody know we've done a lot of experimentation on this with our own business and with others that we thought that we should let you know what's happening. Marketing has changed and this is what today is all about. So thank you for being with us. Now to get the most out of today, I'm going to ask that you turn everything off. Anything in the background, Skype messages that might pop up, emails, Facebook. We're actually going to go through some new strategies and introduce new language today. We're going to be talking about some complex components that sit behind our strategy, like semantic search, machine learning, artificial algorithms. You may have heard these words before, but we're going to tell you why all these things are so important and sit behind our strategy. So allow yourself the luxury of learning today. It's something that as busy tourism professionals we very rarely get to do. So if there's one thing I ask is just be present for the whole hour. I want to reiterate you're in the right place. You signed up for this because perhaps you're experiencing marketing overwhelm. We find a lot of our friends and clients are experiencing this phenomena. The marketing landscape is changing so quickly, particularly the online and digital landscape, that there's so many choices that we have now, so much that we can put our money and just as importantly time towards. So you want to make sure that your marketing budget and time is spent in the most efficient way possible. You might be relying on hope marketing. I love this term, hope marketing. It's when you put your hope into a marketing strategy. It's not hope, it's not evidence-based. You put all your hope into your marketing strategy and just put it out there and hope it goes all right. There's nothing that sits behind it. Your friends might be doing it, your competitors might be doing it, but you throw your money and your time into it and hope it goes okay. It's really important that you have evidence and research behind any marketing budget that you spend and also any time that you put towards marketing. So this strategy has been experimented with over the last two years. We've researched it ourselves and as I mentioned previously, we've used our own business as a pilot <laughs> towards this strategy and we're really excited about the results. As a tourism professional, you stretch for time budgets are tight and you have competing market needs and you have stakeholders. This is why every decision, not only in marketing but your business, needs to be backed by solid research and solid customer research. So let's go through what we're going to learn today. Today is all about how you can create a powerful online presence, a digital presence for your destination, your company, your product or your service, and how to rank on Google above your competitors, even the big ones. And we are going to show you how we actually did this with our business where to focus your marketing budget and time over the next year or two, the five surefire tactics you need to use over the next year, and you will have a very easy to follow tourism digital marketing plan that ensures that you will be found by your travelers and potential customers on the internet. Not only will they find you, but they'll be able to book you as well. So let me tell you about where it all began. I am completely obsessed with marketing. I'm a nerd. I love it. I love the cause and effect associated with experimenting and marketing. And I guess that comes with being a researcher. Any search of any researcher. I'm a market researcher. So I'm obsessed with marketing and Carolyn is obsessed with human behavior and how people make decisions. And as a result, we're a pretty powerful couple. So our, our obsessions were used for good. So what happened a couple of years ago, um, I started hearing the term um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, semantic search, and 
marketing was associated with this. So what happened was um, Google switched over an algorithm to semantic search and I ended up becoming, becoming obsessed with this topic and how it all works and how it's going to affect our lives and our marketing and our business. It's profound and I don't hear a lot of it, us in the industry really talking about it. And so with some of these things we started experimenting on our own business and we were so excited at just how powerful it was. We're a small business of two and a half, three people. So we were really excited when we started seeing our own business outperform .edu, .gov domain names and even massive competitors and we'll talk a bit more about that later on. So over the last year or so we wrote a post on our blog about this system and it piqued some interest and we thought okay well we'll write a little handbook for our clients so then we wrote the handbook which was I guess um, an add-on or a bonus to one of our bigger products and it turns out I'll be really honest with you that the bonus was more popular than the actual product itself which is insightful so we had people um, customers wanting us to present workshops on what was in this booklet around this methodology so then we ended up traveling and delivering workshops to destinations to help their industry with this methodology and it went from there and then they realized a couple of destinations well this doesn't just work for tourism it works for all small businesses all businesses so in one destination I ended up presenting this methodology to a group of small business owners owners not just in the tourism industry so it works as a general rule on the internet and we're going to find out why so after a while of experimenting our inquiries grew um, and our trust reputation and authority grew not just within the travel and tourism research community but also um, in in the press in the general press we outranked our competitors on Google. We really felt like we'd cracked some sort of a code. It was so exciting. So if you have a look at this screenshot, I shot this in, you can see incognito up the top. And I did this in December. So essentially what you can see there is in the organic search results, the top two positions are taken by us. So we are taken we are above Tourism Research Australia, which is the Australian government research website for tourism. We're above the Journal of Travel and Tourism Research. We are above what you can't see under there is all sorts of government and dot edu websites. And also our largest competitors, Focusrite, Skift, a whole range of names that you hear about. We Little us outrank them all because of this methodology. The last couple of years we've tweaked it, we've experimented with it, um, but it's been consistent and our findings have been consistent. So, you know, if we can do it, you can do it. So as a result of the Trust Reputation Authority, you know, we've been asked to be interviewed on some television shows. I spoke to Today Tonight about seniors travel. Carolyn's spoken on the ABC, on radio and on TV. Um, we've been in the Herald, we've been quoted in Mumbrella. In fact, we've had the um, chief editor of Mumbrella come to one of our workshops. So for us, we are now considered serious experts in our field and this is where you can be as well. So let's get to it. What exactly is the five-step tourism marketing system? There is one thing you need to know, and I touched on this earlier on. Success with this system comes about as a sum of all of the parts working together. Nothing works on its own in isolation. So I need to say that this campaign will not succeed if you leave any element out. It all works together and we can vouch for that. So you need to be committed. You need to be committed to this system for a year or two. Time is going to be your greatest friend in this system. And we will go through that a little bit later on. As I've said several times now, 
if we can do it, you can do it too. We are a small business too. So if you're a small business, small destination, you need to start now and again, we'll tell you why. So what we're going to cover in this system is our five step marketing flower that you can see there. Very importantly, what's happened to marketing? We're going to go through a few assumptions within your business and then we're going to go through the five step system methodology. You will be surprised because you will have heard all of these things before but we want you to take action on all of them. So what happened to marketing? Well, a couple of years ago, we started hearing a different type of language. What Carolyn and I like to term nerd speak. I am a nerd, I love this stuff. It is an obsession that I just, I have. I read about all this in my spare time. It's a bit sad, I know, but I really enjoy it. And I guess you're the beneficiary of that. Um, we started to hear all these uh, terms, machine learning, artificial intelligence, semantic search and yeah it is nerd speak and most people's eyes glaze over but you need to start taking notice. By now we probably know a little bit about what all this is about but I'm going to show you how it relates to marketing. I'm so passionate about this. What we saw happen a couple of years ago was the biggest change in the internet since the internet begun. I consider the introduction, Google's introduction of semantic search, the beginning of our own internet or industrial revolution. It is so important. It was an algorithm switch that once Google switched over, changed the, the way the entire internet was structured. And it was all around machine learning artificial intelligence. This is so exciting. I need to stress to you right now that we are at the beginning of time. We are at the beginning of our own internet revolution. We will never ever be here again. And I like to term 2016 is the new 1760. It's really, really important. It's so exciting. And as a business or destination, you really have an opportunity to, I guess, forge an online presence right now like no one will ever have again. It's amazing. So let's talk about what semantic search is and what happened. So when Google switched over, and I say when Google, we, we actually had all the other search engines, Yahoo and Bing, etc., had already switched over to semantic search. But Google, holding around about 70% of the global market, switched over. That was a big game changer. So what was happening previously before the switch is that the internet was a system, I guess, a set of algorithms that were very easily gamed by keyword stuffing, by artificial links, by, you know, what we called black hat marketing behavior. So unfortunately what happened at that time was that the deepest pockets and the highest marketing budgets generally came out on top. So when a customer was searching for say for example Sydney travel or um, New York accommodation or luxury um, trails for example, um, they would be getting results that were not unique to them but those results that they were receiving were keyword gamed. So Google being all about the customer switched over to semantic search because it's an intuitive system. So the algorithm uses true meaning, intent and context to identify and prioritize pages with relevant content. So what it does now is it prioritizes web pages to the customer, to the searcher. So think for example if I'm sitting in my lounge room and I'm searching, you know, dreaming about a holiday, I'm dreaming about a beach family or a family holiday. What Google wants to do is present results that are unique to me. Unique to me is Bronwyn. So it might look at my own personal information and Google has all access to all of this. If you don't want it to, by the way, you can switch it off. So Google knows my past search history. It knows where I am located. It knows that I'm in Sydney. 
It knows my habits on social media, what I like and what I share and what I comment on. It knows my IP address. It probably knows because I have three children that I search for lots of accommodation and experiences around families. So it's going to present to me things totally geared towards me. So on the other end, when it looks for you, the operator or the destination website, it's looking for the most relevant pages to present to me. Brom and White, mum of three kids, family of five. So it's going to look for pages and look for content that truly depicts what it thinks I will be interested in. So this may be different to my next door neighbour, for example, who is a couple. You know, they might search for the same type of keyword. They might search for Sydney accommodation or New York tours, for example. It will present to me a completely set of different results to what it would for them because they probably could think of nothing worse than being near people like us. It'll probably <laughs> show different you know, different types of accommodation. We're going to get accommodation that may include apartment style, that includes kitchens, self-contained facilities. They want to be in the smack bang in the middle of the hype. So Google gets to know you and it wants to get to know your website too. And the only way that we can do this is through content. Content consistently on your site is going to help Google understand. So the only way Google understands what you are about is through content and regular content so that the algorithms can learn what you are all about. And that's what machine learning is, is that the more regularly that you, you place quality content on your site, the more that the web, um, that the social, that sorry, <laughs> that the websites and the crawlers on the search engines can figure you out and provide real answers to my search query. So the implications, what appears on page one of a Google search result is different for every search query, every mobile device and every desktop. So your goal in the next 12 months to two years is to build trust, reputation and authority. Google is only likely to present web pages that it trusts, that it trusts to give correct, useful and relevant information. So this is what we're going to think about now. You have to think about yourself as a publisher of content rather than a marketer from now on. This is really, really important. And I want to stress that this does require commitment and hard work. It's not a quick fix or a silver bullet. And the magic ingredients, time and consistency, because the machine learning happens over time. So as long as you are consistently placing interesting content relevant to your customers and your branding on a regular basis, the machine learning can figure you out. The algorithms can figure you out and position you as a trusted source of information to me sitting in my lounge room. This is your goal. Why should we care? We spend 13 hours online searching before we book. Now this is Australians. In China, it's 22 hours. So the internet search is the one constant tool people turn to for inspiration at every single point. And the path to purchase is by no means straightforward as we can see here. So when this switch happened a couple of years ago, Google changed the way our potential customers find us and what information that they will receive. And it, in turn, changed the way that you need to manage your business and your online presence. So here we go, a few assumptions before we start. Very importantly, you need to know who your customer is. You need to be very familiar with your target market and your target personas. You need to be familiar with what they're interested in, um, why they like your type of accommodation, and this will help inform the content that you deliver. The next very important item that you have to be clear on is your branding. So I want you to consider now that you have a set of two customers. Google and your travellers. So you need to consider that Google is looking for the same type of information as your travellers. Sounds strange, I know. But 
you need to be consistent in your branding. So that means you need to be consistent in your words, tone of voice, language imagery, visuals, identity. You're not only going to confuse your travellers if you're not consistent in your branding. We all know this. It's branding 101. But if you're not consistent, the algorithms can't figure you out. You are going to confuse the algorithms. This is really, really important. So time and consistency so that the machines can learn about your business is vital. And I had to put an Albert Einstein quote in. that The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So are you willing to change? you need to be. So here we go, straight on to it. Here is step number one and you're, you're going to say to me, I know, I know about Google My Business but it is vital for your, sec your, your success and what I say to people is that if you love Google, Google will love you back. And to be successful in any business today you need to be searchable. You know, you can have the best um, attraction, you can have the best rooms, you can have the latest technology, but if Google can't find you, you're not going to have a lot of success. And by far, Google My Business is the easiest and cheapest way to do this. It's free. You have no excuse. It's free and easy. So if you have not claimed your page, claim it now. If you're our destination manager, get your businesses to claim it, claim their pages now. And most importantly, you need to optimize your page. Now, I talked a little bit, bit about confused algorithms before. You know, if your website, um, your opening times on your website are different from the opening times, for example, on your Google My Business page, you have a problem. Information has to be correct everywhere in every part of your online presence. So not just with Google My Business but all of your business listings needs to be consistent in the information that you deliver. It can seriously damage your brand and your online presence if you have inconsistencies in just the small things, even the address. You know, remember the machines, they need to figure you out. It needs to be consistent. You need to be trusted. They will not trust you if there, there is different messaging all over the place. You need to optimize with lots and lots of content, words and images. And I have it um, on in good faith from Mike Blumenthal who is an absolute authority on Google My Business that very recently and unofficially because remember nothing's official with Google that Google is giving priority to those who post lots of images. We have no excuse in the travel industry. We are not a washing machine. We are not insurance. We have visually beautiful photos to deliver. So you need to think think of this and post photos to your Google My Business site. Now you need to learn and love Google Plus. Now I can hear you groan. Yes, no one is on Google Plus. But you know the one person who is on Google Plus? Google. So you need to think of Google Plus now as a marketing tactic rather than a social media platform. Google Plus is instantly indexed. So the post that you put on Google Plus will instantly come out in search and again unofficially be given priority. So it's really, really important that you learn to love Google Plus. Reviews, reviews, reviews. Now, reviews, you need to get as many in there as possible. Once you have five stars, the star, you know, your, fi your stars will actually show. So make sure you harness reviews, ask for reviews, our eyes naturally gravitate towards reviews. Number two, mobile. Now what happened last year was that Google announced that Google searches take place on mobile devices in many many countries. There are more searches on mobile than on desktops. So they've been telling us a while to plan for mobile first desktop second. It's happened now. So in April last year 
we witnessed mobile Geddon. It's nerd speak, yes. But what happened is that Google started penalising sites that were not mobile friendly. So you need to ensure that your website is mobile friendly or you really do stand to lose business. And in the travel industry, what we're seeing, the trend, is that most of the research is done on a mobile device, but we're still booking on desktop. So unfortunately, we have to make a good on both platforms. But um, if you need a focus, focus on mobile first. And you can see if your website is mobile friendly by going to the Google Mobile Friendly tool. And all you do is Google, Google Mobile Friendly tool. Put your website address in there and it will tell you if your site is or isn't Google Mobile Friendly. If you are not, it will tell you what you have to do to fix it. So then you just send that off to your web developer. You know yourself what happens when a site's not mobile. Mobile, We get very frustrated. They'll just go straight somewhere else, you know. Hard to click on links, contents all over the page. People disengage with your brand. They're not likely to come back at all. We get really cranky. Step number three, content. Now content is the centerpiece of everything that you do. It sits at the center. You can put it in your Google My Business. You can put it in mobile. Content, content, content. As I previously mentioned, you're no longer a marketer. You are the publisher of content. We need content for the machines and the algorithms to figure what we're all about, to figure what your website's all about. So if they can't find you and figure you out, you won't be found by your customers. And content is how you build trust, reputation and authority. Not only the search engines are going to get to know you, but also your potential travellers. You're going to build trust in your travellers too. The more information that you have for them, you're minimising their risk when they're making a decision to book you. Ways to create content. Blogs, of course. Now I know that people automatically think of a blog and groan and I don't have the time to write, I can't write. But there are other ways to create content. You have your mobile phone, videos, images, PDF example itineraries is content. Now it's really important that you understand that Google can read images, it can also read videos, it can read PDF. So, you know, you can just take a photo a day and that's building your content library. So just remember that anything that you do, any, any activity that you do either on social media or on your website is considered building your content. It's helping the search engine algorithms figure you out. And you know, don't, just don't think about yourself either. So if you're a hotel in a destination that holds markets, festivals, talk about that. And again, it helps give the machines context around what you do. Um, you know, and it helps if someone's searching for a destination rather than a hotel, you could be brought up as well in a search if you're talking about markets, festivals, local stuff going on. Number four, visuals, visuals, visuals. And as I mentioned before, we are so lucky, but I still see faded thumbnails and outdated websites. You know, there really is no excuse now with our phones for poor outdated images and visual content. And it does not have to be professional. Um, you know, we're thinking, we're talking about um, authenticity if you're taking your own mobile videos and your own mobile photos. It lends a certain authenticity that highly produced videos and photos don't give us. So, and remember they can actually read, the algorithms can read your visuals as well. And as we can see here, this is lifted from Neil Patel, the statistics talk for themselves, content, content, content. Our eyes are visually drawn to beautiful images. Here 
is one. Here is um, Experience Barbados. We love this site. Um, we met these guys at the last Tra Travel and Tourism Research Association conference. And um, when we were there, they had actually just launched this site and it was very, very heavily researched. Um, when we saw it, we actually said, we think this site is very, very heavily researched. So um, we made a call to them and, and they were very excited that we had noticed. Um, what I'm seeing now, this is a best practice website. So what I would suggest you do, if you're looking for examples of how to, um, you know, present great content, visit Barbados. It's a beautiful site that is visually compelling. Um, there's all sorts of experiences. Again, you can borrow ideas from this website if you're a small operator. Um, lots of ideas here and you can see how well they present um, their experiences and festivals and all the things around, you know, to do. So, um, you know, again, you, you don't have to have something as extensive, just borrow themes and ideas. They do really, really well and they've spent a lot of time and budget researching. So the other part of visuals I want to touch on right now is video. Video, video, video. Now, do you know that travel is the most consumed video content on YouTube? So again, you've got to get on there. You've got to have a YouTube channel. No excuse with your phone. Just, um, you know, take a picture of that sunrise as you're coming into work, if you're going to work early. You know, just little local shots. You know, if you have volunteers in your centre, get them taking beautiful videos of their favourite local spots to lend a certain authenticity to your destination. Um, video, video, video. And what's more important you need to know is that Google owns YouTube. So remember what I said, you love Google, Google loves, your back, loves you back. Um, you know, travelers are really interested in hearing real life stories. So as I've previously mentioned, it's not about highly produced, very expensive content. It's about local stories and how you can build your brand um, on the idea of local. Number five, social media. Okay, yes, get on Google Plus, but I want you to think about Google Plus more as a strategy rather than a social media outlet, because possibly I think I'm the only person on Google Plus <laughs> for the reason of our site, and um, hopefully you'll be on there with me too soon. So um, let's make friends on Google Plus, okay? Now, social media is really, really important. Now, for algorithms, Look to social media to gauge whether or not your content is popular, whether or not people are commenting or, I guess, sharing your content, um, liking your content. If people are doing all these things, it indicates to the search engines that people like you. You're considered an authority and that coupled with your consistent content being pushed out on your website, for example, is a powerful combination. Um, and refer, we refer to this as social signals. So one very important thing you need to do across all of your social media, and this goes for any social media, it goes for Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter, is make sure that your URL is consistent across all of those social media channels that you have. Um, the reason is that the algorithms are looking at the URL. So if there's activity within your URL, for example, um, like sharing, sharing gives a natural backlink to your website anyway. But you know, the algorithms are picking up on that. So if you have content, if you're posting content that is, you know, not your, your customers are not reacting to, you need to look at that and um, look at tweaking how you can better service the people that are um, following you on social media. So, you know, it gives the search engines an assessment of the contextual value of your content. So that is why content sits behind everything that we do. So if you think of your content, your content's going to be visual, social, mobile, mobile and sit behind Google My Business too. Now this stuff really, really does work. It worked for us and I'll tell you how it happened for us. A couple of years ago we were at the um, Parta 
travel conference in Cambodia and um, this is when I started getting really excited about uh, machine learning and semantic search so we put out a press release about how it's going to affect the travel industry and we're in Cambodia and what happened um, we were writing about this stuff and kind of experimenting greatly with our own website is that the press release was picked up by a whole range of um, travel industry papers but also a lot of um, <clears throat> general press as well but what happened then and this is what happened with the sharing um, this was the social signals working for us is that it was picked up by two massive authorities in semantic search in the search area so Jim Munro is an absolute authority on search and David Amerland is the absolute authority on semantic search. He's published many books. If you're interested, go to David Amerland. That's where it all started for me and um, I'm one of his groupies now. So um, we, we are friends on Google Plus because that's where people like us hang out. So um, when they shared my content, it told Google, hey, if these guys are sharing their content, they must know what they're talking about. So once this happened, and literally on this day, thousands of people read our content shared by these absolute authorities. What happened on that day a couple of years ago is that we were catapulted, I guess you can say, to page one or you know position one. Um, on Google and I guess we were working up to that we were experimenting with our methodology and um, we were consistently building on that but when this happened on that day it truly did happen for us and it was so exciting and at that point we were considered um, true experts in the eyes of Google um, they trusted us to present us in a lot of search and as a result our queries and our PR has just been crazy so um, that's the end game that's the end result so we really focus on our content we focus on our blog pieces and I have to say you know it's it's hard even for us to have the time to produce really compelling content all the time we are travel research we're not a destination so hey we have to try and be creative with our imagery for example and um, our blog posts you know take quite a long time to put together we put our heart and soul we're not pushing those blog posts out all the time weekly you know maybe one or two a month but it's still working for us and it's working for us because we're in the very early days of semantic search so you know you really do have time to learn if you get onto it straight away so now why did we show up today let's go through it you probably showed up because you are frustrated by the number of marketing choices out there and not where not sure where to start you might be looking for a straightforward marketing strategy that actually works for you your destination and your business and I talk about marketing overwhelm you know where, where on earth do I start that is what we're hearing all the time now you're probably also looking for a marketing strategy that doesn't cost the earth that is not complex that's easy for you to execute in-house or outsource we've done all of this ourselves um, because we believe you know we we are passionate it kind of makes us um, we, we, we enjoy writing we all had to start somewhere and um, you know I invite you to go and have a look at some of my earlier blog posts they're really bad <laughs> just you know in in every way shape and form and I've I've improved myself you know I'm not a natural writer Carolyn is but I I struggle um, it takes me longer but I enjoy it and um, you know this is stuff that you can do in-house that we've done in-house but it's also something that's easy for you to outsource to a local writer you know if you do decide to outsource some of your blog posts make sure that you inject your brand and your voice as a final piece of the blog post so you can get the blog post written for example you come into it and then you can put your voice that is I mean if we ever do that that's what we're going to do so and again photos that type of thing so you're probably thinking the obvious question is how do I get all of this work working in my business get it up and running quickly you can take the complicated and confusing 
route like we did and try and figure it out for yourself. We are researchers, we are professional marketers. This is our job and yep, it took us a good couple of years. Or you can go simple and strategic and just let us tell you exactly what to do and when. So what this is all about is our five step marketing DIY system virtual workshop that we are launching in February. Now we've decided on February because many of us in the Southern Hemisphere, this is our very busy time of the year, Christmas. We have our school holidays, it's hot, it's summer. Um, we want everyone not to be stressed and be present in learning. So we're launching it today. We're finessing it over the next couple of months and we will launch the workshop, the live virtual workshop in February. So this virtual workshop, it really is the absolute fastest way to gain big online marketing results in your business or destination marketing while getting some clarity and focus along the way. Hopefully we're going to get you over marketing well, overwhelm. So what do you get in our virtual workshop? Well, basically you get a ticket to the five step tourism marketing workshop. Now, when I say a ticket, your entity gets a ticket. We want your, every, you know, as many people in your business to learn about this. Um, it's really, really important. So if if you have five people working for you in a marketing department or one or two, it's okay for everybody to use this. Um, we just ask if it's a separate entity that they get a separate ticket. So you can turn up live but we know sometimes that doesn't happen in travel. So what we're going to do is that all the trainings will be recorded. So if you miss the live workshop, the trainings will be there. The benefit of coming live is that you can ask Q&A live. So, but we do have you covered. You'll be able to email questions as well. So you'll have lots of training videos, lots of cheat sheets and checklists to go through. And not only that is that we give lots of secret sauce and tips. Um, again, there's lots of little things that come into play here. So, um, you know, it's little, but you know, with seemingly meaningless things that come into play. Like I think Google Plus is probably one of them, one of the most important parts of the, um, of the flower, if you like, and live coaching. So what we're going to do though is give you access to the 40 page ultimate um, five step DIY booklet that started all of this for us. So if you're in your busy period, you might have time to print this book out and read it whenever you have some downtime, which is highly unlikely in the next month or so, but you'll be able to get yourself a little bit more familiar for when we dive into the virtual workshops and you get that immediately. Now, as a bonus, this is really awesome and this is something that we're offering to you as a flagship member of this product. Membership to the MyTravelResearch.com Premium Travel Trends Hub and Membership site. This is really exciting. Um, we publish uh, monthly reports on trends, on opportunities, on uh, market intelligence in the travel and tourism industry. So what you're going to create is a unique competitive advantage in your business, a strong and competitive online and digital presence, an evidence-based marketing strategy. You're not going in blind, you're not relying on hope marketing. We have worked on this solidly for two years. It works. You will create a compelling web presence with opportunities to sell, which is what we're all here for, isn't it? We're here to sell, we get here to get more leads, more interest and more visitors in your destination product or service. So not only that is that you're going to improve your online engagement with your customers and Google. So what all this costs? Your investment is $497. This is awesome, awesome value. So you get the live workshops, you get the recorded workshops, cheat sheets, checklists, and you get membership, premium membership to mytravelresearch.com. So you can pay up front $497 or a little bit more with 12 installments of $47 a month. 
where do you get it? Well, pop over to our site. What we're doing is we're sending you to the mytravelresearch.com pricing page. So this will take you to the premium membership sign up page. And also, because it's a busy time of the year, we're extending our guarantee from 30 to 60 days over the summer. If for some reason this isn't for you, we will give your money back, no questions asked. This is awesome value and in fact we've never done anything like this before. It's a launch price. It's um, it's going to cost you $497 for the virtual workshop and the recordings and 12 months access to the mytravelresearch.com premium membership site. So essentially for these two products combined you're only paying half price. You're getting two for the price of one. This is exceptional value and this should really help you with your New Year's marketing resolution of fantastic marketing. So what happens next? So when you go into the pricing page, again, I'll just reiterate, you actually buy the workshop through the mytravelresearch.com membership. Um, so you go into the pricing page, click on the single user. So you can see up the top there, it's $47 a month, or go down to the bottom here for the yearly pricing, which is slightly cheaper. It's $100 cheaper. So um, most people tend to go here for the yearly plan. And what happens then is that you will get an email with your login for the premium membership site. So we are yet to issue the logins for the um, for the workshop, but it will be the same login. So you will get instant access to the premium membership site, which costs $497 anyway. So in this premium membership site, you will see all sorts of things. So you'll get the, um, we've just put in there the visiting friends and relative research, which is awesome and exceptionally popular. All sorts of things on digital trends, um, path to purchase, local tourism. This is a massive trend at the moment. Um, branding, market segments, um, all sorts of things. And here is the ultimate DIY marketing toolkit. So click on that and you can download your booklet right here straight away. Put it on your bedside table. And that's pretty well it. So um, what I suggest you do is after this webinar replay is click on the buy now button below or you can go to this website and buy. If you have any questions, um, please email me, Bronwyn at mytravelresearch.com. You can message me personally on plus six one 0408-225-766 or call. But thank you for listening. Thank you for coming all this way in this limited time replay. I really, really appreciate it. Please send me questions. This is a very limited time offer. We will only have it open for the next week or so. Um, we will do another run again, um, probably uh, sometime in January. But any questions? feel free to ask. Thanks for being with me for the whole hour.